What's up guys, Jace Two Cents here, and we're gonna talk about RAM once again, because if you haven't seen our first video leading to this one, I highly recommend that you pause this video and go and watch the first one, which was specifically, does RAM matter for gaming computers? And what we did in that particular video is we tested single channel and dual channel with different capacity configurations. So four, four eight, and 16, both single and dual channel on a few different titles that we figured would have different types of RAM utilization. And the results were, well, not surprising to me, they were surprising to Phil and to a lot of you in the comments who were kind of surprised as well. So if you haven't seen part one, technically, of this little RAM series, please go and watch that first. But today we're gonna to talk specifically about RAM speed. Not to be confused with RAM Stein. That's something different entirely. Building upon their highly popular H-Series cases, the new H210i, 510i, 510 Elite, and 710i from NZXT offer a sleek yet functional chassis for PC enthusiasts. Ample interior space and airflow make the H-Series the perfect choice for both air cooling as well as water cooling, while the intelligent features offer integrated temperature monitoring and lighting control seamlessly. To learn more about the H-Series chassis from NZXT for your next build, head to nzxt.com. So we didn't do any different configurations in terms of channel or capacity because we already talked about that, obviously. So for testing today, we had 16 gigabytes of G-Skill Trident Z, and this was specifically the part number, um, where is the part number on this thing? F43866C18Q-32GTZKW. Basically, it was a 32 gigabyte kit where it comes with four of these. Uh, but these are 3,866 megahertz dims, which is kind of funny because we're talking 100, and 130, 100 versus 133 base clock, right? So RAM is just like a CPU in the sense that it's an ASIC. And what that means is it has an operating speed and an operating frequency and all that sort of stuff. But what confuses a lot of people regarding memory is I think a lot of people just start discussing like, well, how much RAM do I need? Do I need four, eight, 16, 32? But that's only a small piece of the puzzle when it comes to RAM. Now, when it comes to gaming computers, uh, obviously the most important piece in your system is the graphics card. That's responsible for handling all the post-processing and all the, gr the graphics prettiness of your game. But your CPU, people often will talk about your graphics card could potentially bottleneck your CPU, are not considering how RAM is also playing into that whole equation. So what we did today is we took 16 gigabytes of the G-Skill, and even though it's rated at 3866, we ran it at 4,000 at its, mem or its stock timings, which in this particular set, does it have another? Yeah, CL 18, 19, 19, 35, which is not very tight. This is the same RAM that we actually use, this exact set, and two more of them over there, oh no, over there on the computer. Um, this is what we used when we were doing the world overclocking challenge with Steve, uh, you know, Gamers Nexus. And we actually ran these all the way down to like CL 11, like extremely tight. But what we did was we just took the factory timings and then we changed the actual RAM speed. So what we did was we did, um, what, five different speeds, I think it was, four different speeds. So we did 4,000, then we did 3,200, which we kind of find to be the sweet spot. A lot of RAM kits now are coming about 3,200 megahertz because it's gotten a lot cheaper to manufacture RAM, so you're getting more speed out of it. We also then tested 2,600, not 2,666, like we did in our previous video and then 2133, which is actually the DDR4 base uh, speed for memory. I think technically it's 2400 now, but 2133 is where DDR4 pretty much bottoms out in terms of its base clock. So we did that particular test. Um, and then what we also did was a comparison between the fastest memory speed at 1440 versus the slowest memory speed at 1440. And then we tested across the board with 1080p at all those intervals because again, we're looking for bottlenecking here with the CPU and how RAM speed specifically equates to those particular uh, titles. Now we had a slight title change on this one. We went, we got rid of Doom because Doom will run on a freaking Raspberry Pi practically. Not really, but close. Four gigabytes at 2133 single channel was still 200 mega or 200 megahertz. Yeah, 200 megahertz for the game, I guess. 200 mega frames. 200 mega frames a second. <laughs> so we replaced that title instead with uh, Ghost Recon Wildlands, which is a much larger type of game with a much more intensive graphics engine as well as more CPU included in that particular title. But other than that, we still use uh, World of Warcraft floating over Ogremar, which as you guys know, the major cities can definitely become a bit of a bottleneck. We found what was the lowest FPS portion as we were kind of flying around, and then we used that as a static shot, no movement, just to see what happens with the FPS. WoW is kind of hard to benchmark because there's no track 
It's never the same players online, they're never in the same place. So we had to kind of let it run for a while and then average out the FPS there. But other than that, everything else was at uh, maximum settings. And um, I guess we'll just go ahead and show the slides just like last time and we'll talk about it. We found some interesting results in this one. So there's definitely some stuff to talk about. So Cinebench R20 doesn't really care about memory speeds. And the only reason we threw that one in there is we needed some sort of a control that was just CPU. Now Blender might have showed a bit of a difference, but this is still more or less how it pertains to gaming, uh, at least in this discussion. And R20 was just put in there sort of a, as a sanity check. Now Battle for Azeroth, or WoW BFA, the latest expansion, 4,000 megahertz gave us 140 FPS average. But as we dropped the memory, down to 3200, we saw a three FPS increase. And from the minimum to the maximum and the average, that increase was across the board. So it wasn't just like a margin of error. Uh, but once we dropped down to 2600, we lost quite a bit of FPS down to 130 average frames per second. Again, this is at 1440. We didn't do 1080 in World of Warcraft because literally it made zero difference to the FPS. Uh, but then at 2133, we dropped all the way down to 119. Those results aren't really that surprising if you watched our previous video where we did uh, four gigabytes at 133 megahertz. Um, we saw a significant drop in performance with RAM speed as well, because we know that this is a very CPU intensive title. I think a good title to test if there was a way to actually measure it would be Minecraft, because that's all compute. And then GPU is just being used for like some shaders and stuff, but it's very basic. It's all CPU intensive. So that would have been interesting to talk about. Um, Far Cry 5. That was just a linear scaling. As speed was faster, so were the FPS. So at 4,000, we got 150 average at 1080p. At 3,200, 141, all the way down to 127 and then 117. That's like, that's exactly what you would kind of expect, but that's not always the case because if we look at Wildlands, that gave us the same weird result as BFA, where at 4,000, we got 129. At 3,200, we got the same score at 129, where BFA came up a little bit. But then once we dropped below 3,200, then we saw a linear drop off of 117 at 2,600 down to 109 at 2,133. It looks like the honest sweet spot, which a lot of people have said, and I've sort of agreed with, although I'm usually willing to go down to like 2,600 or 2,800 on memory, because you can easily overclock the memory a little bit if you don't mess with timings and save a little bit of money, mummy, save a little bit of money. But with how inexpensive 3,000 and 3,200 dims are becoming, uh, right now, it looks like 3200 is the sweet spot. Now, if you take a look at the previous video, eight gigabyte dual channel versus 16 gigabyte dual channel, I would still say those on a budget should definitely consider taking a look at eight gigabytes with 3000-ish megahertz sticks. But what about if you're not running 1080p? Because that was the other question that popped in our head, was like, Jay, you've got a 2080 Ti, not overclocked by the way, just locked in terms of fan speed and um, power limit and all that, so it wouldn't, we wanted to alleviate the graphics card fluctuating, affecting our scores. We only wanted the variable to be our, our RAM speed. But what we found with 1440p, uh, 4,000 megahertz in Far Cry 5 was 135 average FPS. But at 2133, we dropped uh, about, what, 19 FPS down to 116. So that showed us that that particular title was definitely wanting the capacity, like we showed in our previous video, but also wants the speed to go along with it. But if we go ahead and look at that on the flip side and we take a look at our 1440p test with Wildlands, they were the exact same number. So we actually thought that those were the same engine, but based on these results, I would say they're probably not the same engine. Apparently I need to breathe. My, phone, my watch is telling me, Jay, you need to breathe. I just get really passionate about this stuff, right? So because RAM speed or the base clock is only a part of the story when it comes to RAM, there's also RAM timings. Something I've honestly never done a video about on this channel, but I've played with a ton when it comes to trying to get the most 3D mark performance uh, out of our CPU, because we also found that we were getting more FPS when we'd become hitting a, a hard wall that we couldn't get past. Tightening up the timings not only impre improved CPU, but GPU score as well. So what we decided to do was take uh, the sweet spot, which was 3200 megahertz on our dims, 
And then we took the 1080p 3200 megahertz setting and took the timings from 18, 19, 19, 39 to CL 15, 15, 15, 32. So actually I think it was actually CL 15, 15, 19, 32. And so what we found here was that in Far Cry 5, being the title that had the most linear scaling with speed uh, at 1080p, because again, we wanted to keep that CPU being stressed, we found that we actually increased our score from 141 average FPS across four runs to 147. So we gained six FPS by simply changing our timings a little bit. And those are not the fastest timings we could have gotten. Like I said, in our overclocking stuff, we've actually run these all the way down to CL11 with a cast timing of, I believe, 28. So this was definitely not being pushed as far as it could. So here's my recommendation. At the end of the day, like our ballistics memory, because it's a 2400 stick, actually has timings of 16, 16, 16, 39. So just, you know, one setting or one timing, click. one click faster than that. But again, like I said, what you'll often find is the slower memory sometimes has tighter timings. So what I need to ask you guys now is what do you want us to do in the future? Do you want us to do a video about timing where we kind of go in there and see exactly how timings affect various titles? I think this one's harder to test. I think there's gonna be a bigger margin of error range when you start dealing with timings. Um, one of the reasons why I think at 4,000 we saw a weird increase in performance at 3,200 versus 4,000 is because we were pushing this RAM beyond its spec at that point. So there could have been some error correction happening. Um, no way to really quantify that, but we did see a couple of those tests where 4,000 to 3,200 either yielded a slight improvement or no change at all. And then under 32, it just started to go bonkers. Um, but yeah, so my recommendation though regarding memory is right around that 3,000 to 3,200 megahertz, even with loose timings in dual channel is where you should be shopping. And that would be the same thing for eight gigabytes in dual channel. I think you would see the exact same uh, type of linear scaling. So if you guys have any good ideas for titles that we should test, um, we, as we, I showed, we kind of did a slight title change by getting Doom out of here because there was zero, zero impact whatsoever with timing in Doom. Um, but I'd like to continue investigating RAM timings because I think everyone puts all their emphasis on GPU and CPU, but they forget that to get every ounce of performance out of your system, if you pair it with terrible RAM or you even have that RAM slot, you don't have that gap between your RAM. A lot of people in the last video were like, well, how do I know if my RAM's in the right slot? Well, one, RTFM, or read the freaking manual. And then the, you know, the other thing you could look at is if you have four slots, there should be a gap between your RAM sticks. If they're next to each other and you got two empty RAM sticks, welcome to single channel, my friend, and GIMP performance. So if you guys are enjoying these videos, give us some other topics you think we should delve into. I'm enjoying doing this type of topic again. We haven't done a lot of this exploratory, explorative, Explorer. Welcome back. <laughs> no, I have like a, like a an eyebrow hair, like in front of my eye. So I was like, <laughs> secret like fly past, past, flies past the dog. And it's like, like Zuri chases flies. Okay. Anyway.